What's up, Buck? Doug Dean in the garage. Let's talk while I'm driving this morning. What do you say? I got a new setup to hold the camera. We're going to see if uh, noise levels in the Jeep will allow me to uh, record or if I got to go back to the drawing board. Anyway, last video was about installing a vacuum gauge inside your vehicle, a permanent one. This video is going to be about A, why you would want to do that, and B, what kind of information you can get from a vacuum gauge. I'm going to show you how to read a vacuum gauge and uh, what certain readings will let you know about your vehicle. As I said in the last vi uh, video, vacuum gauge is a great way to get a view inside your engine. See what the health of your engine's like. You can figure out stuff like, do I have bad rings? Uh, is my timing off? Uh, it can indicate things like blown head gaskets, uh, clogged exhaust. All of those reasons are the primary reason why I wanted to install a vacuum gauge in my vehicle. So I could see the health. I got a, a four liter with, what is it? 174,948 miles on it. It's old. It's not at the end of his life. In my opinion, it's about halfway there. To be honest, I'm taking this thing to 300 at least. But, yeah, it's getting tired. It's got all original components, and uh, I want to have an, a view into the health of the engine. Now, that's the reason I install the vacuum gauge. But most people install vacuum gauges for another reason, right? They install vacuum gauges as an instant miles per gallon gauge. What that means, instant miles per gallon is the, the mileage you're getting right now. Right this second, I'm getting X mileage, um, as opposed to like an average. When you go to the gas station and you divide miles gone by the amount of gas you got, you're getting the average miles per gallon for your whole trip, or whole tank of gas. You can get instant miles off of a vacuum gauge. Here's the reason why. A vacuum gauge, or the vacuum inside your engine, is a direct correlation to the amount of work that the engine is doing. All right, think of your engine as a big air pump. What your engine does is it takes in air along with fuel, it compresses it, uses that compressed air for work, and then exhausts it and uh, starts the process all over again. It's just pumping air in, then pumping it out. That uh, pumping in is what creates the vacuum, all right? Vacuum is created inside your cylinder and manifold uh, in between the top of the piston and the bottom of the butterfly valve on the throttle body. So uh, what you have is your piston moves down in the cylinder. As it does that, it's pulling air, creating vacuum, uh, which is pulling air from the manifold, which is pulling air from around the butterfly valve. Now how uh, open the butterfly valve is on your throttle body decides how much vacuum you have in your engine. All right, it also decides how much work your engine's doing. If your butterfly valve is wide open, you have almost no vacuum, and your engine is being asked to perform at its highest level. That's why the less vacuum you have, the less instant miles per gallon you're getting uh, at any given moment. Conversely, when your butterfly valve is closed, uh, your engine is creating more vacuum because the piston's still pulling down, but there's not as much air to get in. All right. Now, there is also vacuum created on the other side of your butterfly valve in your um, air box. That's called ported vacuum. That has a purpose. Some vehicles measure that with a mass airflow sensor. That's not what we're talking about. For this video and with the gauge that I'm talking about, and when you check vacuum on a vehicle, you're talking about the vacuum created between the top of the piston and the bottom of the butterfly valve. So those are the two reasons why you might want to install a, a vacuum gauge in your vehicle. Either you want to be able to see into the health of the engine, or you want to know what your instant miles per gallon are. In fact, when you buy a vacuum gauge to go into your vehicle, there's a very good chance it's going to have these little indicators around the outside that tell you you're getting poor mileage, you're getting good mileage, uh, you're getting uh, whatever mileage. Um, it doesn't give you an exact number of what miles per gallon you're getting, but you can use that to determine your, how you're driving is affecting your mileage. Maybe you notice, hey man, I, you know, I don't really need to have my foot at half throttle right now. I could pull back, travel the same speed, and I might improve my miles per gallon. Now, as far as the health of the engine and how a vacuum gauge tells you that, <clears throat> there are a bunch of factors inside your engine which will also affect your vacuum. I told you that vacuum is decided by how open the butterfly valve is on the throttle body. Well, if you have something like a stuck valve, that will affect how much vacuum you have. If you have something like slow timing, be it valve timing, ignition timing, that will affect your vacuum. If you have a clogged uh, exhaust, so something in your exhaust system is clogged, creating excessive back pressure, that will cause you to have less vacuum. 
uh, a blown head gasket will cause you to have less vacuum. And you can actually determine each of these conditions by what the vacuum gauge is doing. If you have steady low vacuum pressure, you either have a clogged exhaust because that'll affect all the cylinders or you have uh, possibly a vacuum leak, all right? Which we actually have a video on vacuum leaks. You can check the card up in the corner. If you're watching this video because you have a suspected vacuum leak, hit that video. There's a really cool way to test for a vacuum leak using propane, which is much safer than the old school method. Um, if you have a vacuum gauge that's bouncing down, which is actually what I have in this Jeep on startup, that might indicate something like a stuck valve. Um, the reason it bounces is because that condition, that one stuck valve, doesn't affect all the cylinders, it's just affecting one of the cylinders. So you're hitting that bounce when the vacuum should be created in that cylinder, but the rest of the cylinders are still pulling the appropriate uh, vacuum. Now speaking of appropriate vacuum, pretty much all vehicles should have a resting idle vacuum once the vehicle is warmed up between 18 and 21 inches of mercury. Inches of mercury is a unit of pressure, I'm not going to go into that now, but any vacuum gauge is either going to be measured in inches of mercury or I guess millimeters of mercury, centimeters of mercury, whatever overseas. But that's the way you measure pressure. Um, now, if you're at sea level, you will have, uh, going through a tunnel, <laughs> if you're at sea level, you will have 18 to 21 uh, inches of mercury on your gauge on a, a healthy engine. For every 1,000 feet above sea level you go, you have to subtract one inch of mercury. This is because of uh, there's less pressure as you go up and it affects the engine. You've all heard about vehicles performing less efficiently at high altitudes. It's the same idea there. Um, so you plug your, your gauge in, whether it's a handheld gauge for testing vacuum or it's a, a permanent gauge like the one I installed uh, down there on my uh, Cherokee here, and you look and you see you have uh, 15 inches of mercury, all right? That's low for a normally idling engine. What kind of things could that indicate? Uh, it could indicate, first of all, just a tired engine. Uh, worn out rings, but more likely you have uh, retarded timing, be it spark timing or um, uh, valve timing. Now if you have a distributor, you know that you can advance your timing a little and that very well may fix your problem. Uh, my 4 liter has slightly low uh, vacuum. We're at like 16, 17. And what I think that probably is, is the timing chain, is, it's stretched, it's old, it's got 175,000 miles on it. So it valve timing is a little bit slow and that's indicated on the uh, vacuum gauge there. Uh, like I said, a bouncing gauge could indicate something like a blown head gasket. If you have a blown head gasket and it's blown in between cylinders three and four, um, you're going to get a bouncing. Every time cylinders three or four goes on the downstroke, the intake stroke, where it should be creating vacuum, it's not going to create as much because it's leaking from the other cylinder. Uh, now if you have steady low pressure, all right, something around maybe five uh, inches of mercury. That's not going to indicate a total loss of pressure, but what it probably indicates is a leak. Maybe your throttle body is leaking around the, uh, the gasket there. That's a very common one, especially on four liters. The paper gasket uh, in between your manifold and your throttle body either gets old or someone took the throttle body off and didn't put the paper gasket back, and so they leak a little bit right around there. Maybe you're leaking at one of your vacuum fittings. The point is there's a bunch of different little bits of information that you can get from a vacuum gauge that otherwise you might have to tear the engine apart, all right? If I, to, to find out that I have a sticking valve, I might not know that, all right? What mine is doing, just to give you the context, when I start my Jeep up, my vacuum jumps from about 16 down to 10. It just goes like this, bing, 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 Bing for the first 30 seconds to one minute until uh, the engine warms up, and then it's fine. It's steady at, like I said, 16, 17, which is low, but for a Jeep with 175,000 miles on it, I'm not too worried about it. Um, without this vacuum gauge, I wouldn't have known that. Now, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna take some sea foam, I'm gonna try to clean up my valve train a little bit, and uh, clean off some of the carbon in those valves, see if that doesn't help it. I'll bet it does. We'll probably do another video on that when we do. The point is, this vacuum gauge was $40, and the information it gives me on my vehicle is invaluable. I drive this thing uh, 60 miles a day, five days a week, 52 weeks out of the year. Well, not 52, I get some vacation, but you know what I'm saying. I need this thing to run, this is my daily, all right? I need it to be uh, there and I need it to be reliable. 
having this vacuum gauge in there lets me know about little issues before they become big issues, right? I can, I have a view into the health of the engine. And like I said before, if I was into um, MPG, uh, I could use this gauge to hyper mile. If you're not familiar with the term hyper miling, it's a style of driving which maximizes your vehicle's uh, miles per gallon. It involves coasting and you know knowing just when to brake and all this. And there's some people that take it real friggin' serious and they get crazy big numbers out of vehicles uh, way above you know manufacturer suggested miles per gallon. Uh, back in the day, Eric and I built a WJ. Actually, Willie, before he was an off-roader, was a hypermile WJ. We were getting like 25 on the highway uh, through a mix of some mods and some hypermiling techniques. Now, a vacuum gauge was always on my list to get in there. I wish I'd done it because you can use that to find out where's your ideal throttle range to make just enough power to get where you're going uh, so that you're not using more fuel than you need. Um, as most of us do. Honestly, most of us in our mindless driving, we use the throttle and the brake way too much. Uh, you can think of it like this. Anytime you brake is essentially wasted fuel because you're canceling out uh, work that the engine did and to do work the engine needs fuel, right? So if you have to brake a lot, you're going around a corner, you brake and then you speed up and then you brake before the next corner, you're not optimizing your vehicle's fuel efficiency. Uh, a gauge like this, a little vacuum gauge can help you realize, oh, you know, where to hit the throttle when you're in that optimum range. Now when you have your foot on the gas at a moderate level, you're just going to be at a, a very medium uh, inches per mercury, something around maybe 10, 15. Now when I put my foot into it and ask the engine to do work, you see that thing drops way down, way down. I'm taking all the vacuum out of the engine by creating more power. Now you see when I took my foot off the gas, the needle jumped up to what, about 23, 24 inches of mercury? That's because when I get off the gas and the butterfly valve snaps closed, uh, all that pressure is being built inside the engine because the pistons are trying to pull more air, but it just isn't there to pull. The butterfly valve is closed, like that. And that's how you would read uh, a vacuum gauge. You want to keep your that needle above, certainly above 10, but if you can, around 15, 20. All right, if you can do that in normal driving, you're going to maximize your vehicle's miles per gallon. So as you can see, the gauge is actually crazy responsive, and it directly correlates to what you are doing with your right foot. Uh, and in that way, you can really use it to maximize the efficiency of your vehicle. And like I said, it's a great window into the health of your engine. Now, that's on a newer fuel-injected engine. If you have a carbureted engine, something with a distributor, you can tune an entire engine with a vacuum gauge. If you've ever seen Eric the Car Guy's uh, Ford Fairmont hot rod project, he tunes that entire engine with nothing more than a vacuum gauge. You can set timing, you can set fuel air mixture, right? A good old school mechanic needs some rudimentary tools and a vacuum gauge and he can tell you anything you want to know about an old style motor. You know, something that's uh, carbureted, fuel injected, though they do obviously still have a lot of value today. A lot of systems are run via vacuum on your engine, Air AC systems. A lot of old trucks and Jeeps use vacuum actuated uh, transfer cases. That means when you, if you have a like an old Chevy, not an old, old Chevy, but like a 80s, 90s Chevy, and you have the push button uh, transfer case, Eric used to have one of these. When you push that button, it's not electric, it's vacuum actuated. You are triggering an electronic solenoid, which enacts uh, a valve, and that uses vacuum to pull a diaphragm, which pulls a cord, which shifts your transfer case into four-wheel drive. Now, if that sounds really convoluted for no reason, you're right. They don't really use vacuum for transfer cases anymore because it's kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, I much prefer a lever. Most of them today are electric, but uh, a lot of them in the old days were vacuum. So if you had a vacuum leak, you might not be able to transfer your Jeep, your Ford, your Chevy, whatever, into four-wheel drive. Uh, another one is your brake booster. Uh, if you've ever seen that, that relatively thick um, rubber line coming off of your brake booster, that's a vacuum line. What happens is the engine creates a vacuum that goes into your brake booster and acts on a diaphragm and that helps magnify the force that your foot puts into the brake pedal. All right, if you ever wonder why you can stop your whole vehicle with just your big toe, it's because your brake booster and your brake booster is able to do that because of vacuum. All right, uh, So having a healthy vacuum system in your vehicle is huge. It's really important. Your vehicle's not going to run right. It's not going to run right whether you have a brand 
brand new 2018 vehicle or if you're trying to run something from the 60s, if you have a vacuum leak somewhere, it's not going to run right. The systems in your vehicle aren't gonna run right. All right, so I'm gonna put another link. Check out the other video if you wanna know how easy it is to install one of these in your vehicle. Obviously, these rules are the same for the handheld version, but personally, I like to just have one in the vehicle. Why not put one in the vehicle so that all day, every day, I can look at it, I can get used to the norms, see where it should be, so one day if it's acting strange, I, I know that there's something I have to look into. So, if you have any questions, by all means, leave me a comment down in the squawk boxes. I am not pretending to be a master mechanic, all right? A true master mechanic can do some crazy stuff with a vacuum gauge. The things that they can glean, and they know exactly, oh, well, is it dipping four inches or is it dipping five inches? And they know exactly what the difference between those two readings means. I'm not that guy, unfortunately. If you have a vacuum issue or you put a gauge on your vehicle and you see an issue, I highly recommend uh, you're welcome to ask me and if it's a Jeep I may know the answer but if you have something else get on a forum say hey man I've got this year Ford uh, and it's dipping seven inches of mercury when I do this you know what does that mean and I, there's gonna be some old-school mechanic out there who's gonna be able to tell you oh what you gotta do is tighten up your rotary girder and your P7 intake manifold derp, derp, derp. all right because there are guys out there who can use these it's, it's like magic if you've ever seen a true old gray beard Using one of these uh, vacuum gauges, it's wild, man. Look into that Eric the Car Guy Fairmont video. It's pretty, pretty cool. Anyway, like I said, leave me a comment down in the squawk boxes. Uh, I hope you found this amusing, educational, maybe entertaining. If you did, by all means, like the video, sub to the channel. Uh, as always, I appreciate your viewership. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.